uh, group three. Oh, oh, okay. Turn it off. Um, to our summary, we think Victor's anxiety and disability to rule the monster is the main cause to all the misery. After su suffering so many tragedies from the day, the, when the monster escaped from Victor, he learned and came up with other ways to be accompanied. <laughs> but Victor holds his position as he is correct. He regrets immediately for making a promise and afraid of what the monster my dude, if he refused the demand. He was worried for the second creatures would be as evil as the original, but he still didn't notice that the evil was caused by him, causing by the responsibility that he was not willing to take. So that the monster knows that his mat, <laughs> sorry? When the monster knows that his mat was destroyed, all his passion for his life turns into reve revenge and the monster chose not to kill this Victor. Instead, he mythically emulated love and compassion from Victor's life so that the creature will know, as his creature does, the torment and loneliness and speculation. Mm, if Victor believed him, the female monster was created. Maybe she will not accept the Original monster as Victor guest. <laughs> mm. But we could guess that the female monster would understand that he was not as also not acceptable for other people and it would be possible for her to be together with the male monster. After all, they are the same existence. I don't know how to do this. <laughs> how to what? How to what? <laughs> <laughs> or, or by the whole group? Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Um, so this is David's group, right? Yeah. Could you help him summarize? Um, actually, I, I think the group did quite a good job. They really impressed me because um, they were very precise on the excerpt analysis and they gave a lot of supporting passages from the novel so I think it is it is good enough and um, Wait, what is what are their main points um, they talked about um, whether whether Victor should create a female monster for the male monster so um, so it was Eleanor and Phoebe who talked about it. So, um, they they one of them choose one side. So, yeah. So they discussed it, and I think it is very interesting. Oh, so one said no, one yeah, said yes. Yeah. Okay. So good. So by this, I think they covered it all, and I think they can go a bit deeper about the metaphoric and symbolic extensions, but they talked about. Um, identity and humans horror of the unknown and appreciating nature yeah and um, Samuel talked about the relevance to us and um, he made f four points which I think are are all quite good about um, how man how we are isolated how we are lonely and we seek for a, a, com a companion and about our hatred, our desire to revenge, and also um, how ironic Victor is that he blames himself while um, he tries to get away from human. And um, wait, uh, you you said that Samuel said that uh, it's no, no, human no. nature to re seek revenge. No, um, it was just one point. Yeah, right. Uh, but I pick up on that point. <laughs> oh. So, is human nature to seek revenge? Well, I can't understand my notes now. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, 
Okay, uh, Samuel, is that one of your points? Yes or no? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is being fence rider. You know. <laughs> okay, anything else? Um, no. Okay. Well, um, yes, uh, I agree with Samuel. That, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, uh, this is like my reading. Uh, many of you are saying that uh, death is uh, like a sleep uh, and uh, using. Uh, uh, opium uh, to induce sleep is better than death. You know, I wonder if you really think so. You know, when you come and uh, death being not proud. You know, and here, uh, but let's talk about that uh, later. Here, I think that uh, indeed, as we follow the plot, we tend to be sympathetic with the monster, with Victor, in the, uh, in their hatred and their uh, uh, need to seek revenge and kill each other. But I think you need to step aside and uh, and see what get them into this deadly lock, you know, that lock of uh, you know uh, in mutual embrace and uh, obsession. And I guess uh, you know at, at different points uh, you could have made different decisions so that you don't get to be entangled with another person that you want to uh, seek revenge against uh, so much, you know. Um, there was always so many people, you know, why do you have to be with that person? You know, if you hate him, then just, you know, forget about him. And I think that will make life uh, a lot easier, yeah. Okay, um, uh, I think, th yeah, because our time is limited, let me uh, quickly move on, move on and let me uh, let you know uh, what I think about the passage. For one thing, I think that uh, the passage shows uh, the monster to be very persuasive for me, you know. I think uh, as I said just now, I think he uses different tactics, you know, uh, emotional appeal. Uh, this is really what persuasion is about, you know, uh, making emotional appeal and then also giving reasons. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Victor is one to uh, try to evade, you know, try to send him off. You know, he uses the word begun several times. At first, uh, Victor calls him, calls the monster vile insect. Okay, uh, and then uh, he he wants to kill him, but the monster is one to to try to pacify him and then ask him to hear him out to hear uh, his story. Okay, and then uh, as I said, uh, besides telling the story of his learning, his being rejected, uh, he also appeals to uh, Victor's uh, rationality to say that be not equitable to other pe every other and trample on me alone to whom thy justice is most due. Okay, so he appeals to the sen uh, his sense of justice. And after the destruction of the female monster, again, he, uh, Victor says, Begun, I, uh, I will not hear you. Um, there will be no community between you and me. We are enemies. Okay, so Victor is kind of, uh, the monster is one to switch his position to try to get Victor's sympathy. But Victor, uh, after his destruction of the female monster, um, becomes uh, steadfast in his own position and sees the monster as uh, his enemy. Uh, even um, wait, uh, oh sorry, this is a uh, this is uh, chapter uh, twenty. Chapter seventeen is uh, after the monster's story and before Victor uh, makes a commitment of creating a female monster. He still rejects him, uh, but then uh, the monster gives even more reason. Uh, he said it twice. Make me happy, and I shall be uh, shall again be virtuous. And here again, he said, "Make me happy, and I uh, and I will uh, appreciate you as my creator, etc." And he gives uh, promises of not bothering human world, etc. And that's when uh, Victor finally listens and then uh, decides that um, he should uh, give uh, the monster the justice uh, he deserves. But then he uh, breaks the promise again. Okay. Uh, never will I create another like yourself, equal in deformity and wickedness. So this again is a kind of fixed um, position. You know, he determines that the monster is deformed and wicked. Okay, and that's a, a, another uh, re, uh, example of how Victor is unable to appreciate uh, the monster who is only ugly in appearance. Yeah.
Okay. And here, uh, le let me give you, um, because uh, there is this mentioning of the word community. Uh, yes, there can be no community between you and me. Let me bring you uh, to another level of the discussion of this novel. The novel can be discussed on, uh, in terms of science, scientific creation. The novel can be discussed in terms of human relations, human boundaries. But it can also be discussed in terms of the political events of that uh, age. Um, at that time, uh, because of the revolu revolution and uh, reform, uh, they're having a lot of discussion of what political community means. Okay, and Mary Shelley, according to this critic, uh, engages in this discussion. Um, and she believes that uh, human beings can uh, create new communities. Okay, um, and she believes that with uh, enmity, uh, the de and uh, alienation, there is not, uh, it's not possible to create human community. But then if we can create new terms between the monster and uh, Victor, and then a uh, new community can be formed. Uh, and then according again to this critic, um, many characters besides Wharton, okay, uh, Felix, uh, Sophie, uh, the monster too, uh, are seeking to establish their own community. And that's a new one. A new one, like uh, Felix and the, the, uh, his father, they are exiled, and then uh, Sophie followed them to to join them. So they are all trying to establish a new community. Okay, like the monster and Walton. So uh, how to um, set up this new community? You know, uh, upon some common basis, you know, becomes an issue, an important issue uh, on the political level and also on the human level. Here, in talking about community, you know, of course uh, we talk about boundaries. You know, who do you see as English majors, uh, uh, English department as a community, and who is in and who is out? Who do you see as Taiwan's community, who is in and who is out? You know, the some Xinjou Min, are they part of our Taiwanese community? You know, it's all uh, an issue of inclusion and uh, exclusion. And then when you define who is in, who is out, what do you do? You know, wh what factors do you use? To, uh, to determine uh, who is in and who is out. Do you look at their blood uh, heritage? Do you look at uh, the duties they perform, like they pay the tax, uh, they, uh, they, they are dutiful children or citizens and uh, parents, etc. They give birth to uh, n uh, new babies, or um, promises they made uh, to this new community, or do you uh, determine it in terms of contingency, like, oh, this person happened to be here. Um, like uh, uh, yeah, oh, okay, thank you. Uh, no, he was born without his choice. And then I think his mm, parents, both of them, passed away. Then uh, should we see him as Brazilian, right, or as Taiwanese? You know, then uh, th the question, uh, like, uh, or foreign, the so-called foreign brides. You know, since they are brought here, you know, uh, for different reasons, you know, do we see them as Taiwanese, even though they don't have the so-called Chinese blood? Okay, so that determination, if we include them because uh, they just happen to be here, then it's a matter of contingency, or anything. Okay, so uh, human identities get to be uh, revolutionized, uh, normalized. Because of the issue of contingency, you know, sometimes uh, oh, you, uh, you go to the United States and you find it place uh, very good and you happen to get a job there and then you become an Amer American, right? Okay, or oh, you happen to fall in love with a, a French people, a person, and then, you, you know, you become French. Okay, so there are a lot of matters which are contingent to our sense of identity, okay? And then the other kind of issue involved is indeed justice and sympathy. You know, when we talk about who is in and who is out, sometimes, uh, you know, the most um, problematic issues uh, will be illegal immigrants or uh, the so-called boat people who uh, get landed on like United States, France, etc. And then uh, for the safety of the nation, sometimes they'll send them back to where they come from. But then that will, be, that will really mean endless miseries to those people, okay? So I think this is a, 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 a possible way for you to extend the issue of monster. You know, who are the monsters? Who are the exile? Who are the 
abject， 就是被剑刺的人。Okay, in in our community, and whether we should include them as part of our community or not. Okay, okay, uh, group one. 那个要考试的同学就可以先走。好，翻译学生的。Well, actually, group one did a very good job. Uh, so I'll just let them talk. Okay. Uh, our conclusion is about the roles of the women women in the novel, and we will focus more on Elizabeth. And first of all, um, the key to understand Frankenstein's added uh, character can be found in a detailed portrait, portrait of his childhood Mary Shelley creates. And the most important fact we learned about Frankenstein's youth is his attitude toward Elizabeth, and their relationship forms. Um, a vital element in the novel, and uh, Elizabeth represents Frankenstein's family life, especially in the fact that Frankenstein's mother died during his childhood. Um, but however, however, Elizabeth does not, does not seem to play to play a role in Frankenstein's formation of his civilization in one way or another. Um, in fact, every living being is. Uh, sorry. Um, in one way or another, and uh, here, uh, Elizabeth is one person Frankenstein would probably do anything for. Uh, he has always seen Elizabeth as his possession. It has been since the first day when which she was presented to him by his mother as a gift. Uh, the fact that he considers his her property while he does love her. As to the fact that Frankenstein does not view Elizabeth, Elizabeth his equal, and here, um, Felicity will in, uh, continue our discussion. So, um, Caroline Elizabeth's interesting influence Victor, and um, Agatha, Sophie, and Eve influence um, the monster. So, um, wow. Well, um, Elizabeth is the kind of girl that none can could behold her without looking on her as a sacred angel that comes from the heaven. Well, when Victor re re released from the prison, she went back to Gene Geneva. He went back to Geneva, and Elizabeth still keeps a pure and sacrificing image as before. She never stops worrying and caring about Victor, and although she don't know what she didn't know what happened to Victor, she is still there by his side, which is a uh, a strong spiritual support to him. Well, um, Elizabeth comforts Victor whenever he encounters dif difficulties. Therefore, we think that Elizabeth towards Victor is just like sunshine that never stops standing warm to the earth. Um, Victor admit that he looked upon Elizabeth as his, till that she was to be my only. This sentence showed that Elizabeth must be owned. Which suggested her weaknesses and vulnerability. Well, um, this kind of male possession of female is a very typical attitude of the time. Um, well, man see seeks for love and companionship to them. Woman should be the one that contains their desire of seeking for love. Well, of course, woman in the, the, the that society has their own thoughts or opinions, but they just can voice it out because because of the atmosphere. And there's another character, Justin. Justin's passiveness is a result of her lower class, gender, and the poor family backgrounds. And another very important character, Eve. While well, she is, uh, the monster sees Eve, uh, the monster sees himself as Adam, which is lonely as Adam. And so Eve became a shape of a monster, for, a shape of the maid for the monster. And. Um, well, uh, I'd like to do a little s summary of our creative response. Since many statements in the pas passage are not objective because um, they are written by Frankenstein's point of view, so uh, we provided two different perspectives of Elizabeth. One is from female and the other is from a male. Um, from the letter of a female, um, Elizabeth tends to be very sentimental. She cares about her appearances a lot. Here says that. However, as time passes, I'm getting older and older. It is be is it because I'm getting older that 
I am not that beautiful anymore so that he want, wants to get rid of me. And um, as for the letter of written by a male, the image of Elizabeth seems to be stuncher and she is and there um, she starts to be insane and cries, so she is a more emotional image. And but the the, the deep, deep love of Elizabeth is cl clearly seen in both letters. Um, so, in conclusion, the role of female in the story are like self-sacrificing, loving, passive, and pure. However, the um, female monster symbolizes the dark side of women. Victor is afraid that the female monster might be out of control, which means that she might she might may not be submissive. So Victor decided to destroy the, the female monster. Um, uh, it was also this group that uh, says that uh, it is possible that uh, the female monster uh, represent um, female sexuality that uh, uh, 19th century male characters and male uh, center figures uh, are afraid of and that's why uh, the female monster has to be uh, killed yeah or destroyed um, I'm, I'm quite interested by uh, the two um, narration uh, made by the, the group uh, from the uh, Elizabeth's perspective um, I think that yeah indeed like what the group uh, the summary just pointed out um, the one made by uh, a girl student um, s shows um, uh, a concern with appearance, and this may be uh, consistent with uh, uh, the overall concern with the monster's appearance. And then this uh, female character, you know, in worrying about not uh, winning uh, Victor's attention, also cares about her appearance. Um, but I think the the uh, uh, Wayne's uh, perspective uh, is uh, very interesting. It's actually um, not. Uh, I don't think. I, I don't think I can uh, categorize the two revision in terms of male um, a guys' revision and the girls' revision. No, I don't think uh, we can do that. I think that one is uh, to to show uh, women's uh, conventional concern with appearance. And the other is to show Elizabeth as w one who is more, actually I, I see Elizabeth uh, in Gwen's creation as being more rational, but not um, um, emotional. I, I think that um, uh, Elizabeth, Elizabeth in, uh, under Wayne's pain uh, becomes uh, one who can uh, uh, reason a lot, who uh, uh, considers uh, whether um, Victor, in not telling her the, the secret, uh, does not trust her, or uh, she also um, uh, I, I I forgot my notes. <laughs> uh, I think there is another uh, description made by Wayne that suggests that uh, Elizabeth is self-aware, you know, aware of her position as being a comforter, and then there is also. Um, uh, another view uh, 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 of herself, which shows that uh, she's not courageous, or uh, Victor is not courageous. Of wh about what? Oh, she is not courageous enough to ask uh, Victor what the secret is. Okay, so I, I kind of like uh, the multiple possibilities. Uh, you know, uh, when creates. Of uh, Victor, uh, what Elizabeth uh, might think in, uh, in her uh, in herself, because indeed uh, the whole novel is quite male-centered. So we don't really know what these women think. We only know their functions, but we don't know what they think. Yeah. And th the question I ask of the group uh, is, uh, what they would have done if their boyfriend or their husband uh, keeps a secret from them. Okay, and then uh, unanimously they said that they will. Well, they they, they said that they will not marry uh, this boy, this guy, uh, if there is a secret that uh, 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 that's hidden from them. Okay, but they take different positions. Like Kara would not push, and I forgot who. 
uh, Karen, right? Uh, someone else said, Karen uh, said that she'll ask. Oh, Karen is the one to say that oh, your text message, right? Uh, to ask for uh, the truth. Okay, but um, I guess uh, it all depends on what the secret is about. Yeah, I guess uh, uh, at some points, uh, if the secret is not like uh, fatal or you know uh, uh, leading to some terrible consequences to the people around you, then sometimes you want to leave some space uh, for this other person, you know, and he might want to keep the previous life from you, and it's not really. Uh, uh, unforgivable in doing that because uh, you st you can start a new life in a way. Yeah. Okay. Um, thank you all very much uh, for this very wonderful discussions. And I hope uh, you all learn a lot from each other. Okay. That's it. Uh, don't forget about the reading for next time and also the quizzes. <laughs>